Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to Wesley United Church. A few announcements just I wanted to highlight. 
Uh, I mentioned last week about the remit, the vote that the United Church was taking, uh, establishing an autonomous national indigenous organization, and I wanted to announce that that has passed, and um, I think it's kind of an indicator that we have a church that's progressive and inclusive. Here, here. A few reminders, uh, pictures in the chapel again after the uh, service for the picture directory. Last week there were 16 singles or couples that were taken, so uh, keep coming please. Uh, there are two more weeks after this week um, for those to be done. The membership committee would appreciate it if you would wear your name tags. Uh, if you do not have a name tag outside, there is a book where you can write your name down and a name tag will be made for you. Okay. Saturday, April the 24th, Wesley presents. The um, group is called Granite Hill and uh, the concert starts <clears throat> excuse me, at 8 p.m. Uh, doors open at 7.30. Uh, tickets are 15. Did I say the wrong date? It keeps, it's wrong in the announcements. April 27th, my apologies, put that, put that in your head. Okay. A um, couple more things. Next week uh, we have an Earth Day service, and that service, um, most of the prayers will be coming from the United Church service. They come up with a, an Earth Day service every year. And so we will be praying some of the prayers that are prayed all across Canada, which is kind of nifty. Uh, and it is the Eagles family that will be leading that service. Uh, after that service, go out for lunch or go home for lunch and then come back. And at 1.30, the Mission and Outreach uh, Committee are planning a cleanup for Churchill Park. So um, people are to meet at 1.30 at Churchill Park. Uh, in the uh, parking lot off of Christopher Drive near the arena. And um, let David Guerin know in the office if you are planning to come because they are arranging garbage bags and snacks and water for everyone. So uh, it would be a, a, a neat thing to do for, uh, for Earth Day. Uh, and I think, oh, one more thing, which is interesting, I think. Next uh, Saturday on the 20th, we are having a cluster meeting uh, this has been arranged through the Western Ontario Waterways Regional Council. Uh, Reverend Jenny Stevens has organized it, and all of the churches in um, Cambridge, as well as the church, uh, the United Church in Ayr and the United Church in Glen Morris, they will all be coming. And we're looking at ways, I think, within the United Church of of doing more collaboration with the other churches that are in our area. And I think this is a great thing. And uh, so that meeting will take place in the chapel next Saturday um, in invitees only. So finally, uh, we welcome Reverend Deborah Devu uh, to our, our service this morning. She is our worship leader, and we welcome you for sure, Deborah. We light this candle, for it reminds us that the risen one is the light of the world. It reminds us that we choose to walk in his way, to follow his path to be his people. Thanks be to God for this challenge and this opportunity. Behind a locked door, in a room captured by fear, Assuring, assurance to a doubting friend, forgiveness to the one still torn by denial. Throughout the ages and glorious grand cathedrals in downtown churches graced with stained glass stories, in simple churches at a country crossroad, 
in small groups of believers gathered on a hillside or by a winding river. In tin and cardboard houses fashioned from what others have thrown away, in shattered hopes of worn down housing projects, in shivers of tent city dwellers, in the whispers of the faithful gathered in lands of fear and oppression, in the lives of all who seek to follow, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let us pray. God of the unexpected, of empty tombs and appearances behind locked doors, come to us in unexpected ways this day. God of surprises, of women who find the living among the dead, of peace overcoming broken hearts and hope entering the struggling lives, surprise us this day with your presence in our, blowing in our midst. God of promises fulfilled, of resurrections and new beginnings, help us to live out your promise of hope and purpose as we follow the risen one. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Scripture reading this morning is taken from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31, and it's a continuation of the Easter story. Jesus has been crucified. He's been placed in the tomb. The stone guarding the tomb has been rolled away. He has a brief meeting with Mary Magdalene and a couple of the disciples, and then a number of days later, he meets with the disciples in a room. He has two meetings with the disciples, and after you hear the reading, you'll understand where the phrase Doubting Thomas comes from. 
When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them this time. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God.
today as we continue into the season of Easter, we read from the Gospel of John. It's an important message to a community that existed some 60 to 70 years after the events of that first Easter sunrise. Like those followers gathered behind a locked and bolted door on that first Easter evening, the followers of John's day also had something to be afraid of. In John's time, the small band of followers of the way were an unpopular minority in the towns and villages of Asia Minor. The world, the word had spread far and wide. The works of love and mercy and compassion were making an impact on the lives of many. At first, the followers of Jesus were welcomed into their local synagogues. We can imagine that their belief that Jesus was a long-awaited Messiah was a frequent source of debate and disagreement at Sabbath services. Then, around the time of John's Gospel writing, there was a heart-rending break within the synagogue between those who claimed Jesus as Messiah and those who yet waited for the promised one. Had it only been the schism within the Jewish synagogue community, had it only been the name-calling and the ostracism, they might have remained strong. But for some time now, Rome had taken notice of that growing group of followers of the way. They were paying a high price for walking in the way that Jesus had taught them, for not renouncing their faith. It began with the first great persecution that took place under Nero in 64 of the Common Era. Some had met their end torn to shred by lions or wild dogs. Some were burned alive as human torches, while others were nailed to crosses as had been their Lord. Just as those who gathered in fear that first Easter, these followers of John, who, these followers who received John's gospel also had every right to be afraid. Time and trials had taught them that fear. The schism was real. The loss of community was real. The stories of those martyred for their faith was real. They needed to be reminded of what happened on that first day of resurrection. So John writes this story to remind them that other, that other band of fearful, disheartened, scared souls who had been crucified, who had seen crucifixion, and were shuttered in fear. Into that swirling, buzzing cavity of pain and pity and despair, into the gathering of wounded souls huddled together behind a locked door, there comes a presence. The risen one stands in their midst. You might think that Christ would have come back in with a scolding shame on all of you. You call yourself faithful followers? But he does not. He simply says, peace be with you. It was as if Jesus knew what they were feeling. The fear, the discouragement, the disappointment, the rage, at a state-sanctioned execution of a good man. The first gift Jesus brings to them is his peace. Did they think he was a ghost, some kind of cruel and mocking apparition? John does not say. But Jesus realizes that they needed more to cut through their shock, so he shows them the best evidence he has the wounds in his hand, and the rips in his side. Proof of his body broken. It was as if he knew how wounded they too were, how much they felt the pain. With this revelation, the followers rejoice, John tells us. 
fulfilling Jesus' promise that they will have joy that cannot be taken away from them. It's hard for us to imagine that moment of revelation, that moment of resurrection, that moment when they realized that Christ was with them again. How often I have read this familiar story of the risen Christ appearing in that room, despite the locked, bolted doors that barred his entrance. I know the story, although the gospel writers each have their own unique way of telling what happened that Sunday. John says that Jesus' followers gave, that Jesus gave his followers his peace. It's nice to think that that would be enough all by itself. Jesus giving them his peace. What more did they need? Surely Jesus' peace would have been enough. But Jesus sensed that they needed more than just the promise of his peace, a peace that they felt whenever he was near. Was it the doubt that lingered in the corners of the hiding place? Was it the suspicion that this was but an apparition, the product of too little sleep and too much worry? Or was it the understandable dread that any moment now the authorities would bo burst through the bolts and locks and round them up as common criminals, just as they had done to Jesus? It was proof they needed. And Jesus realized that, so he showed them his wounds, his brokenness. It was a witness that his life and his love was more powerful than death. It's nice to think that this visible evidence was proof enough. And they rejoiced. John's Gospel says, they rejoiced. Then something happened in the next moment that only John records in this way. It was as though Jesus was saying, all right, now that you believe, there's one more thing. Jesus says to them, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. It's more than the coming of the Spirit into the lives of Jesus' followers. That would be enough all by itself. But Jesus also gives them a commission. Get out there and do what I've told you and shown you and given you to do. I have this picture in my mind of a, a mother hen shooing her chicks out of the nest. She's flapping her wings and in her mama hen way she's saying, out you go, my little chicks. Time to get out there and do what my little chicks are meant to do. Is that why baby chicks are one of the symbols of Easter? But, but they're made of chocolate. So what does this have to do? Sorry, my mind can take off on a tangent when chocolate's involved. And that's what those little chicks or followers do. They cast aside their grief, their worry, their fear that had overwhelmed them for so long. Amazingly, wondrously, miraculously, they are no longer immobilized by the fear that had first had locked them in that room. If being a Christian meant being tortured and killed, they would endure. Such trials were but transitory to those who had been given a new birth through the resurrection of Jesus. What, when you know without doubt that salvation awaits, you possess the courage to believe. When you know without doubt that the message you bear is life transforming then death has no hold over you, and life is all the more worth living. When you know, without doubt, that God's love is in your heart, then love is the heart of your witness. 
Jesus bestowed upon those gathered that day the awesome power to forgive sins, to dwell in hope instead of despair, to live with faith instead of doubt. He filled them with a joy that moved them forward, a joy that spread with each deed of compassion, a trust that multiplied with each act of generosity, a courage that intensified with each triumph of mercy. They received a gift that day, that bunch of uncertain followers huddled behind locked doors. It began with the living, risen Christ saying, peace be with you. And they turned the locks and drew back the bolts and the doors flew open and off they went. Christ alive in the world. I don't have to tell you that a lot of churches are struggling right now. They are focused on survival, fixated on meeting their own needs, absorbed by their own hurts and wounds. They don't necessarily huddle behind bolted oak doors or shrink in the shadows of their stained glass windows. But as I once heard a congregation say, they know where we are. It was like saying, oh, we'll give you a handout, but you have to come to us first. I don't have to tell you that the place of our Christian faith in society seems lessened these days. Unlike the followers in John's day, we do not risk persecution, imprisonment, although that cannot be said of followers of the way in other lands. In our society, in our culture, Christianity has been used by politicians to justify all sorts of policy statements that certainly do not correspond with how I read the Bible or how I think Jesus walked his way. We are faced with those who challenge the, re the re relevancy of our Christian faith. Our faith is a joke to some, a fantastical, out-of-date fiction that no longer applies or even makes sense in our modern-day world. We look at our buildings, they look at our buildings as the perfect means for tax evasion. Christian communities are struggling. I don't know about you, but my heart breaks a little. Every time I drive by a pot plot of land in the countryside where a church is shuttered and boarded, it breaks a little. Every time I walk by a newly built condominium tower that inhabits a street corner where once people gathered to sing and pray and praise and reach out and meet the needs of that community. It was with this story from John's Gospel in mind, a story of bolted doors and shuttered windows, that made me do a little research. With the help of capable office administrator David, I wanted to know about what goes on behind the doors here at Wesley. Are you huddling in fear? The peace that Christ gave to that group of followers so long ago, that commission to get out and go beyond these walls. Is that alive here at Wesley? Has it found a place in downtown Galt? Is it present in the community of Cambridge? Well, I got to say, I'm impressed with what I learned. You take advantage of your downtown location to meet the most basic of human needs, food and shelter. The funds raised through Apple Corps sales, with those funds, you reach out through community lunches and low-cost, healthy meals. I particularly like the cookie decorating you do with the children at special times of the year. Are you catching a theme here? <laughs> Today, you were reminded in those announcements about the grocery cart in the lobby, just, just out this door, that waits to be filled with goods made available to the self-help uh, food bank, the Humane Society, and the Salvation Army. 
This congregation has been instrumental in creating physical protection through the bridge shelter and out of the cold. And your continued and extended support of mental health and addiction recovery programs. You provide safe space through your queer vespers for members of the LGBTQ community and their allies. Your music ministries are inspiring. I haven't even touched your commitment to the United Church Mission and Service, your support to refugees, your response to earthquake relief, the purchase of medical equipment in Ukraine. Do you know that it is ministries like these, ministries of hospitality and welcome, of care and compassion, that were markers in the earliest days of Christian communities? Do you know that these kinds of ministries grew from Jesus' call to get out and do and be the Christ in this world? I commend you on who you are and how you are and what you do in this community. We are the church because to us, still to us, Jesus comes and gives us the gift he gave that day, his peace, his spirit, his mission. We are the church. And Jesus calls and continues to call and commission us in his name to tell the whole world of God's overwhelming, unending, glorious, and gracious love. We are the church, a voice speaking and working for justice, an open hand to those who are hungry, both in body and in spirit, a refuge for the wounded, a welcome to the excluded and unwanted. We are a safe place for the frightened and the lost. We are the church, and we are called to open the doors. Amen. I now invite you to do what we call the passing of the peace. It's something that we have inherited from all of those centuries of those times when Christians have gathered and greeted each other and offered to them the peace of Christ. I invite you to share the peace.
there are many ways that you can support the ministries that Wesley brings to the community and gives to each other. I draw your attention to those that are listed up here, your credit card, your PAR, your Interact, your just a good old check will do too, uh, and cash, cold hard cash is always a good thing. So I encourage you to continue, and uh, if you haven't already, to be part of the ministries that Wesley offers. Let us pray. With gratitude for gifts received, with assurance that we can make a difference, with hope in the resurrected one's power, we return these gifts to you, generous and gracious God. Amen. I invite you to join with me now in a time of prayer. Let us pray. We bring before you, Holy One, these the prayers of your people. We come through locked minds and bolted hearts that make us fearful and anxious in our journeys. We come wanting to set aside the worries that weigh us down and keep us from being the people, the church that you call us to be. How we yearn to hear the words, peace be with you and to truly know what that means. How we yearned to live into the freedom that being a follower of Christ can bring. Casting aside our doubts, overjoyed with the conviction that we have good news to bring. So it is that we ask for courage to live fully into our faith, knowing the tremendous demands that it brings. Send us out, gracious God, with compassionate hearts to change our world. Make us witnesses to your dreams for all your people. To those who are hungry in body or thirsty in spirit, bring your bread that fills empty stomachs, your living water that nourishes quenched parts heart, parched hearts and dry minds to those who live with discord in relationships, bring peace and the will to find a better way. To those who live in lands of war and conflict, bring the will to resolution and reconciliation. To those who work for justice and mercy, bring the strength and fortitude needed to act for peace. In silence now, Holy One, we bring to you our prayers for others. Touched with your blessing, called to be a blessing, let us go out through open doors with open lives. We offer this prayer in the name of the one who has taught us to pray.
Let us go out through open doors to live the resurrection story. Let us go out through open doors to be the Christ in this world. Let us go out through open doors knowing that the Spirit goes with us. Let us go out. Circle. Be unbroken by and by, Lord. 